Good morning, grade eight. Uh, our lesson today, geometry, chapter seven, lesson five, using proportional relationships. Using proportional relationships. Our lesson today is mostly in our real life. Okay. So uh, let's read. Indirect measurement is any method that uses formulas, similar figures and or proportion to measure an object. Like, a student want to find the height of a statue of pineapple in Nebel, Australia. She measured the pineapple shadow and her own shadow. So she measured her shadow and the pineapple statue shadow. The student's height is five feet and four inches. What is the height of the fine apple? We're going to use the proportional in our life to find a missing measurement. We're going to find, we're going to use the proportional in our life to find a missing measurement. So there is a statue, fine apple statue, there is a girl that she wants to know the height of this statue. She knows the measure of her shadow. And she knows the measure of the pineapple shadow. Statue shadow. And she know her height. So she wants to know the height of the pine apple statue. What is she's going to do? What she's going to do? What about using the proportion here? If she, if we're going to say that her shadow over the pine apple statue shadow is equal to her height over the statue height. If we're going to give names for every length here, so <clears throat> the uh, length of her shadow is BC and the length of the pineapple statue is EF, her height is AC and the height of the statue is DF. So her height over the statue height, AC over DF. Her height over the pineapple height, AC over DF, is equal to her shadow, which is BC, over the statue shadow, which is EF. But here is a trick that there are two units used. There are two units used. Let's read again and we will get the trick. The student's height is five feet and four inch. Five feet and four inch. And the shadow here is two feet. And the shadow of the pineapple statue is eight feet and nine inch. So we have to make all the units one unit. Whether to choose feet or to choose inch. Whether to choose feet or to choose inch. I cannot calculate feet and inch together. No, I cannot. Like, I cannot calculate centimeter and meter together. Whether to unify all the units to be meter or to be centimeter. Here I'm going to do the same. Whether to make all the units feet or to make all the units inch. So we're going to make all the units inch. How to change from feet to inch? I'm going to multiply by 12. 
I'm going to multiply by 12 from feet to inch multiply by 12. So let's go back here. AC, AC, her height. The student's height is five feet and four inch. So here I have five feet. So five feet, five multiply by 12 to change it from feet to inch plus four inch. So five feet is 60 plus four inch. So it is 64. I changed the five feet to inches. Five feet to inches, five multiply by 12 is 60 inches. And I have four inches, so in all they are 64 inches. BC, her shadow. Her shadow is given that it is two feet. So two feet. Two feet, I want to change it to inches. Two multiplied by 12 is 24. EF, the statue's shadow. So it is eight feet and nine inch. So I have to change the eight feet to inch. So it is eight multiplied by 12. So it will be what? 96 plus nine so it will be 105 so now i am ready all my units are the same inches they are all inches now find the similar triangles it is another step but we will not focus on it a lot because we're here they draw triangles the two triangles here are the same why? Because we're going to use proportions. We're going to use the height of the student over the height of the statue is equal to the shadow of the student over the shadow of the, of the statue. Why? Because the two triangles that are drawn here are similar. Okay? Then, step three. I want to find DF. DF is the height of the statue. So AC, height of the student over the height of the statue, is equal to BC, shadow of the student of the, over EF, the shadow of the statue. Do I have AC? Yes, AC is ready here after conversion, 64. DF, yes, DF is ready here. Yes, it is. I don't know. DF is required. Okay, BC is ready here after conversion. It is 24. EF, yes, it is ready here after conversion, it is 105. So using scissors, we're going to find that DF multiplied by 24 is equal to 64 multiplied by 105, so DF is 280. Again here, let's watch a video so you can know more about this idea. And tell me if you can see the video or no. You know, we can actually use proportional relationships girls? in our everyday lives to solve no real... You can see it? No. No. Okay, so... Now you can see it? You can see yes. it now? Yes. Okay. ...world questions. Let's check out this one for fun, and you'll see that, in fact, it's an exemplar for lots of possibilities. So a student want to find the height of a giant inflatable ape. You ever see these things sometimes at car dealerships and things that it's really big apes? You see it now, girl?
<laughs> so here's what she did. She measured the ape's shadow and her own shadow and then made a diagram. And the student's height turns out to be five feet, two inches. And the question is, what's the ape's height? Okay, so check it out. Here's my version of this. So we have the scary inflatable ape here. And here's the student who's interested in how high that is. Now, there's the sun that's sort of shining way over here somewhere, and it's casting down and making a shadow. But you see, the important thing is that since this is a level ground, we're going to assume, and we have the sun coming down, then in fact, these lines, in fact, are going to be parallel. In particular, what we see is the angle that the uh, top of the uh, ape's head sort of coming down that line of sight with the ground and the level ground itself, that angle E is therefore going to be congruent to the angle B, the angle formed from the top of the student's head down to the ground, to the end where the shadow is, over. So we have these two angles being the same. Now, it's easy to measure what the, the length the shadow is because the student has to you know, measure along the ground. It's, it's climbing up inflatable uh, ape that you want to try to avoid. So here uh, she measured 10 feet, 6 inches, and her own shadow she could measure or have a friend measure to be 3 feet. Her height, we know, is given to be 5 feet 2 inches. And so the question is, can we use all this information to find this mysterious height? And the answer is yes, because we have similar triangles. Now, do you see it? Why are they similar? Well, we've already established that these two angles are congruent. And of course, since I said we are at level ground, then we know that this height actually produces a 90 degree angle. This is the right angle. And all right angles are congruent. So I have this angle congruent to that angle, this angle congruent to that angle. So by the angle-angle similarity theorem, we know these two triangles, in fact, are similar. Well, great. If we know they're similar, then we know that ratios of corresponding parts are going to be equal, so we can set up a proportion. So let's actually do that. So what I could say is, well, this is to that as this mysterious ape height is to the known height of the student and then solve for that. So let's set up the proportion. So the proportion would be, well, this is to that. So shadow is to shadow. Now I should convert things to the same unit. So let's just convert everything to inches. 10 feet, that's 120 inches plus six inches is 126 inches. So I have 126 inches is to, now I don't wanna write three feet, let's convert everything to inches. So I need to write that as inches, which is of course 36 inches. And that's going to be equal to, so what's the proportion going to be? Well, the ape height to the height of the student. So the ape height, all right, ape is to, and then what's the student's height? Well, five feet, two inches. Let's convert that to just inches, and we see 62 inches. And now I can solve this for the ape height using the uh, cross product. So I see... 36 ape equals, well, 126 times uh, 62, which is 7,812. If I divide both sides by 36, I see that the ape height is equal to 217. So 217 feet? No, remember our units, we converted everything to inches. So these are actually inches. So what happens? Well, if we now divide through by 12, I can see the answer of 18 feet, 18 feet. So the answer to this question we can now see is actually 18 feet and one inch because the seven, of course, we know so one little inch right there. Like I'm going to put the one inch right here. There, one inch. 18 feet and one inch is exactly what 217 inches mean. So. The bottom line is, notice how we were able to use this property of similar triangles to actually find a height that was quite dramatic, about 18 feet in height. It's pretty serious. So this really allows us to do things in practice, finding, for example, the heights of various objects that are just too tall to measure, but using similar triangles with sunlight and shadows, we can actually figure it out. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, girls, next we're going to go to another section. Uh, next page, 
uh, a scale drawing. A scale drawing is uh, much close to a map, okay? Uh, what is the concept of a map? When I'm going to draw a map, I draw the map, but in small uh, scale. Like I cannot draw all the length of the sea or I cannot draw all the measure of a building. I cannot draw this, by, but I can give it a scale. What is the scale? A scale drawing represents an object as smaller than or larger than it is or larger than its actual size. The drawing's scale is the ratio of any length in the drawing to the corresponding actual length. This is the most important uh, sentence so you can understand the meaning of the scale. It is the ratio of any length in the drawing to the corresponding actual length. Ratio of any length in the drawing to the corresponding actual length. So there is a ratio between the length in the drawing and the actual length. For example, on a map with a scale of one centimeter, it is 1,500 meters. One centimeter on the map represents 1,500 meters in the actual distance. Because I cannot draw a map that it is exactly actual distance. I cannot, I cannot draw. So I am drawing the actual distance. I cannot draw. So what I can draw, I can draw a smaller, a smaller, picture for this actual distance. So one centimeter on the map shows 1,500 meter on the actual distance. When I open a map and I find the buildings are so small, are they so small in the actual life? No, they are not so small in the actual life, but they are just drawn to a scale. They are just drawn to a scale. The scale is always mentioned in the map. The scale is always mentioned in the map. One centi for example, one centimeter is equal to 1,500 meter. Every scale for each map is mentioned in the map. Okay, because I cannot draw the actual Building on the map, I cannot draw the actual road or the actual distance or the actual sea or the actual ocean. I cannot draw because they are very big. So what I can do, I can do what I can, draw them small and I can give you the scale. So here an example too, solving for a dimension. The scale of this map, the downtown Dallas downtown Dallas, a city, is 1.5 centimeter to 300 meter. 1.5 centimeter to 300 meter. The two dashes here, I read them too. So the scale here is what? 1.5 centimeter to 300 meter, which means that every 1.5 centimeter on the map represents 300 meter on the actual life. Find the actual distance between Union Station and the Dallas Public Library. Where is the Union Station? Union Station is here. Here. Where is the Dallas Public Library? Here it is. Find the actual distance between the Union Station and the, and the Dallas Public Library. So I have a scale here. For every 1.5 centimeter on the map, it represents 300 meter 
in the actual line for every 1.5 centimeter on the map, it represents 300 meter in the actual life. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to measure on the map, to measure on the book, on your book, the distance from here to here. The distance from here to here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to write the scale 1.5 centimeter over 300 equals to what? The distance that you measured over the actual distance that is required. But I have a trick here that I have different units. I have here centimeter and I have here meter. I must unify the units. I cannot use centimeter and meter together. I cannot ever calculate centimeter and meter together. I cannot. So what I'm going, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, let's read the steps here. Use a ruler to measure the distance between Union Station and the Dallas Public Library. You're going to measure it in your book. The distance is almost six centimeter from here to here by using your ruler on your book, it will be six centimeter. To find the actual distance X, they want to find the actual distance. Of course, it is not six centimeter. It will be more than this in the actual life. So to find the actual distance X, write a proportion comparing to the map distance to the actual distance. I have a scale here. 1.5 centimeter in the map represents 300 meter in their actual life. Equals to what? Corresponding to it what? Corresponding to the 1.5 centimeter is 6 centimeter on the map. Corresponding to the 1.5 centimeter on the map, corresponding to it, six centimeter. So I want to know the corresponding actual sign. So to avoid getting confused, I put everything next to it. Like yesterday, when we studied the uh, bisector angle, it bisects the opposite sides into two proportional sides. So I put each side and next to it the other side next to it i told you choose the side that is next to it so when i put the scale i put 1.5 over 300 as mentioned here 1.5 to 300 1.5 over 300 so i put next to 1.5 1.5 represents centimeter on the map so i will put next to it six that is six centimeter that it represented on the map under it is 300 meter that it represents the actual distance. X is required, the actual distance between Union Station and Dallas Public Library. So, six multiplied by 300, and then X multiplied by 1.5. The actual distance is 1,000 meter or 1.2 kilometer. Okay, girls, 